All right, welcome everybody to this meeting with the Northern Middlesex Metropolitan Planning Organization meeting. Uh, call the meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is welcome and introductions. Um, so Justin, do you wanna call the roll for members present? Yes, okay. So Massachusetts Secretary of Transportation and MassDOT CEO, Jane Tesler. Yep, Derek Cravat here representing Secretary Tesler. MassDOT Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver. Brian Fallon representing MassDOT um, Highway Administrator Gulliver. And then we call Chair uh, Andrew Delaria. Uh, NIMCOG MPO representative Pat Moses. Here. And LRTA board chair Tom Bommel. Here. Law City Council representative NIMCOG and the MPO Dan Rourke. Here. And we have a new uh, LRTA MPO representative doing this day. It's her first meeting. Uh, Karen Paleo. Here. Thank you. Welcome. And that's the roll. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Justin. And yep, welcome, Karen. Um, next item on the agenda is the approval of the September twenty eighth, twenty twenty. Oh, yep, September twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, Northern Middlesex MPO meeting minutes. Um, so it asks for a motion and second to approve those meeting minutes that I believe were circulated. Motion to approve, Tom Bommel. Second, Pat Wojcik. All right, motion having been made and seconded. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes? All right, seeing none, um, we can call the roll. Okay, Derek Kubat. Yes. Brian Fallon. Yes. Pat Wojcik. Yes. Tom Ball. Yes. And Karen Playa. I'll abstain for this one. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, the next item on the agenda is a status report on transportation improvement program projects under design and construction. So uh, maybe start with District 4. Um, turn it over to Brian or Tim. Hi, Tim Paris, District Tim, 4 Planner. Yep. Um, right. We've got a few updates uh, this month. They, most of them all um, are associated with the TIP being updated. Um, 610719 Burlington to Tingsboro Payment Preservation on Route 3 it has a new TIP year and uh, TIP cost. 608816, we've got a new TIP cost. Uh, that's Lowell, Drake at Methuen resurfacing related work on 110. 608-861 Westford Bridge Replacement, Stony Brook Road over Stony Brook. That has a new tip cost. 609-510 Drake Improvements at George Inglesby, Inglesby in Elementary School. That's a site for to school project. That's on uh, now the 2024 tip. 607401 Chelmsford traffic signal installation at Route 110 and 495. That is uh, now in 2025. 607887 Lowell Rourke bridge replacement. That's 2024 with the new cost. 609317 Chelmsford improvements on Chelmsford Street, Route 110. That is uh, new tip years and tip cost. 608227 Bill Ricca Yankee Doodle Bike Path construction. That has a new tip cost. Uh, 607885 Lowell Pedestrian Walkway Bicycle Connection at Pawtucket Falls Outlook from Van Deering Esplanade to School Street. That is uh, now not and no longer has a tip year or cost. Uh, 609250, we have a new tip cost. 610704, Burlington Bill Rickery servicing related work on 3A. Um, that's been moved to February 11th of next year for advertising. Um, 
It's uh, in the 2023 TIP with a new cost. 609035 Westford Rehabilitation of Boston Road, that has a new cost. 605966 Lowell Reconstruction Related Work on VFW Highway, new cost for the TIP. Uh, 608774 Lowell Tewksbury Route 38 intersection improvements. Uh, that's been scheduled now for February 4th next year uh, with a new cost. And 612-197 Amesbury, Haverhill, Lowell, Methuen Bridge Preservation Bundle along I-95. That has been removed from the tip. And 608-830 Westford Bridge Rehabilitation, Beaverbrook Road over Beaverbrook, likewise. And then we skip down to 605-178, Bill Ricca Rehabilitation on Boston Road, Route 3A from Bill Ricca Town Center to Floyd Street. That has a new tip year and cost. And that's it for the updates. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, just want to clarify that these costs are carried in the fiscal year 2023 to 2027 tip. So, um, I think they've changed maybe since the last STIP, but they should be up to date now um, in our TIP document and, and then the STIP. So um, appreciate you sharing that. Um, uh, yeah, Derek Schuster. Thanks, Derek Cravat. Uh, I wanted to note that for some of the projects that Tim provided an update on, such as Burlington Bill Ricca, Project 610704, that because the projects are interregional, uh, both in the Northern Middlesex region and the Boston MPO region. They are captured on the STIP as statewide projects. Uh, so I, I think there were a small handful of those projects shared now. I just wanted to clarify if, if anyone is wondering when or where those are programmed and I'm sharing a link for the 2327 STIP as adopted uh, for your records in the chat in case you want to see other statewide prioritized projects. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Schuster. Any other questions for Tim? All right, seeing none. Thanks, Tim. Um, Sarah, did you want to give a District 3 update? I think Tim covered the, the Westford project. Okay. Already got it. Yep, perfect. Sounds good. All right. Um, so that's agenda item three. Um, I think then we can move to item four, which is an open forum, um, just basically an opportunity for public comments. Um, is there anyone um, on the meeting now that would like to make a comment or uh, have a question at this time? All right, seeing none. Um, if you do have a comment at any point during the meeting, uh, please feel free to raise your hand on Zoom or put a note in the chat and we'll be sure to call on you then. Uh, the next item is federal fiscal year 2023 to 2027 transportation improvement program amendment number one for the Gallagher terminal access project in Lowell. Derek, Derek we're gonna we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Ah, okay. The two sure. agenda items we're gonna start with Envision Twenty. Oh, okay. I was looking at a old agenda. Yeah, Sorry about okay. that. Yep. So okay. Have, yep. Start okay. with the uh, long range plan. Then go ahead, Justin. Jessica, I think I made you a code. Yep. There you go. Hi everyone. My name is Jessica Willander. I'm a transportation planner with NEMCOG. And today I'll be giving a presentation on Envision 2050, and that's the long range transportation plan for our region. Here's our agenda for this afternoon. We're gonna start off with an overview of the RTP. Then I'll jump into the goals and visions for the plan. We'll review the previously programmed projects. We'll discuss the community engagement goals and strategies. And then we'll have a brief discussion. We'll review our timeline and the next steps for the project. So first, I'd like to start off by everyone just doing a brief icebreaker. Um, there's a question up on the slide, and the question is, what does it mean to you to envision? 
if everyone can take a moment and just write something in the chat. Um, when you think of the word envision, really, what comes to mind? So a lot of people are saying the future, um, looking ahead, and those um, terms that actually really resonate with me. And that's why we thought about naming the plan Envision 2050 to get people to think about really the potential of transportation, what it means for our future in the region. So I'll jump to the next slide. And the question is, what is the regional transportation plan? In order to receive funding from the federal government, regional planning agencies are responsible to, for developing a long range transportation plan. And the plan needs to be redone about every four or five years. And our current plan spans through the years of 2020 to 2040. So now we're working on 2050. And as you can see from the pie chart here, there are three fine funding sources for our transportation. That's the UPWP, the TIP, and then also the long range transportation plan. Envision 2050 is our comprehensive vision for the future of transportation in the NEMCOG region. By projecting and planning for anticipated growth over a period of 30 years, this plan will establish a foundation for cost-effective, energy-efficient, and equitable transportation options for all users. <coughs> Envision 2050 is a needs assessment of our transportation infrastructure, including the cost to maintain the system, through the future year of 2050. This plan will identify the region's needs, goals, and policies. And as we know, transportation planning is, in, is influenced by many factors. And this effort will set the standard for a balanced and forward-thinking transportation network in our region. Some of the topic areas that we hope to touch upon in this plan are economic vitality, safety, infrastructure, environmental and climate resiliency, accessibility and mobility options, connectivity, and equity with an emphasis on communities that have been historically marginalized. This plan will build on our existing long range regional transportation plan by improving safety conditions. And one example or a few examples of how we plan to do that are encouraging the use of bike and pedestrian infrastructure and support our municipalities with interventions that promote safer auto speeds. Next, we'll be encouraging load shift and assisting communities with addressing the need for single occupancy vehicle trips, as well as improved trail connections throughout the region. We plan to reduce environmental impacts by reducing the impacts that require mitigation, as well as emission reductions for improved air quality. Next, we'll be fostering transportation equity and promote mobility options that support a diverse set of users, as well as record the transportation inequalities in our existing network. Next, we'll be identifying the gaps in our existing services, and we plan to review the transportation-related challenges near transit centers, as well as employment centers, and develop strategies for alleviating the gaps in our and focus on first and last mile connections in the region. On this slide, you'll see some um, projects that were conducted under the previous regional transportation plan. Some of them, I think Tim mentioned in the beginning. Um, so they're intersection improvements, corridor improvements, bridge improvement projects. And then the next slide has bike and pedestrian improvements as well as transit improvement projects. Here's a list of our community engagement goals. So through our plan, we hope to engage, educate people about the planning process. We'll identify and engage people who live and work and visit our region. We will document, listen, and build consensus around transportation concerns and priorities. We will utilize outreach, diverse outreach techniques. We will build momentum for equitable alternative transportation and reach a greater number of constituents than we have through our previous efforts. 
On this slide, you'll notice that I've listed some community engagement strategies. Many of the listed strategies have an emphasis on long-term relationship building and are centered around collaboration. Through our process, we will encourage the, encourage the community to believe in the vision and build trust with the community by showing how our organization can help. Lastly, we will be improving closer participation from the community towards each effort. So you'll notice we have um, a survey, our kickoff meeting scheduled, some of the email distribution list and focus groups are some strategies that we will employ as part of this plan. So now I'd like to um, initiate some discussion prompts here. So I was wondering what are some of the biggest transportation related concerns facing our region? And feel free to use the raise hand feature um, to answer the first question. You can also type them in the chat if you're more comfortable with that as well. Chris says traffic. <laughs> Anything on there? Okay, interregional multimodal options. And then are there any thoughts on how we should spend our transportation dollars? Folks can also feel free to come off mute as well. If, you know, I think you can feel free to have a free flowing discussion if folks have thoughts and want to share. Um, no need to go through, uh, go through the chair. I know that we're set up kind of in that Robert's rules type format, but if folks have thoughts, definitely feel free to, to chime in. That's a good one, Brian. Designing pedestrian and bike accommodations with using older infrastructure. That's a good one. Despite it being TIP funded, I'm very surprised everyone's quiet about Workbridge all of a sudden. This is a first for me with this region. <laughs> Should it stay tip funded? Uh, yeah. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> my contribution for the conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. <laughs> so I'll add I'll add the bridge world in pro. So I actually I'm here from LRTA, but I live in Tingsboro. So that that world of um, dealing with traffic um, in areas that are divided by bridges is very interesting. So that whole the impact. Um, in the Merrimack Valley region from the Merrimack River is, is definitely a piece that ties into that traffic piece. Um, and then as we add and design that pedestrian and bicycle accommodation, making sure then that we're managing that traffic flow that we're changing based on managing the, the future of travel, right? And, and those, those pieces that continue to impact it ride share, how to increase ride sharing, those in, in ride sharing with multiple people in ride sharing, right? Try, trying to continue to increase those things, especially as we continue to come out of the pandemic and more people do a, you know, a return to work. You can, you can definitely see traffic increasing again. So for folks on this call, how do you manage your travel decisions? So when you're thinking about what mode you take to work or somewhere else you're going? How do you decide which mode is the best or whether to use transit or drive? I'm. Yeah, time is definitely a big one. And convenience, I think, is that other piece? Which it ties into time, but it's all that, you know, it's how long is it going, going to end up and how easy is it to get there? That time definitely is a factor. How much yeah. time 
and cost, and cost, well. cost adds into that too. Yep. Were you going to say something, Ali? I, I was. I actually said cost right as uh, Chris said it. So. <laughs> Still. Work. And then, um, do you think you can achieve most of your trips with the available options? So the options that you have at your fingertips, do you think that you're able to achieve most of your trips using those yeah, options? I think factoring in all those pieces we just talked about, absolutely. But then, you know, it, it, there's various options and it just depends on time, cost, and availability, right? Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. So there'll be a lot more questions along these lines coming out in our uh, engagement survey. So we're looking to hear from folks across the region, people that live, work, or travel through, what are some of their transportation challenges and opportunities? So thank you for that. Your feedback was helpful. Hey, Jessica, if I can offer a little feedback more on the second item, how should we spend our transportation dollars? Something that I wanted to encourage MPO members and member communities to think about is that thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure law, there are not only new funds and more funds available, but different ways that federal dollars can be spent, both over the near term and long term. And to the extent that municipalities do their own master plans or age friendly plans or hazard mitigation plans or any of the planning efforts that have a transportation nexus, there are more opportunities now and in the future than there ever have been to fund transportation projects. And I think it would serve communities and stakeholders well to take that into account when developing your project universe for your envision. 2050 exercise. Yeah, just to build on what Derek said, I think um, this really is a once in a lifetime opportunity under the bipartisan infrastructure law. There's a lot of opportunities and really think creative about your transportation options and what you'd like to see. So just think back to the word envision and remember the future and you're planning for it. And it's important to think about those things. So the next slide is our timeline for the project. Currently we're in November. So on November 2nd, we have our kickoff meeting where we'll provide an introduction to the regional transportation plan. And our survey will also be available that month. And then in December, we'll be holding, holding some municipal meetings with municipal staff. We'll also be meeting with UMass Lowell, the LRTA, and also be conducting focus groups. And part of this effort is to learn a little bit about mode-based um, travel decisions for our region. So we have a group that will be focused on bike and pedestrian, transit users, neighborhood groups, and we're also welcome to ideas on additional focus groups and areas that we can really zone in on and learn a little bit more about their transportation needs. January, we'll um, be receiving the financial information as part of the plan, conducting more focus groups. And then by February, we plan to have a draft plan developed and then in March, we will present the drafted plan for endorsement. As I mentioned, our kickoff is coming up on November 2. So if you haven't registered, I will drop the link in the chat for folks to register. It's gonna be a hybrid event. So there's an option to come in person or virtual to learn a little bit more about the plan. Then here's our contact information. Thank you for your time, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Jessica. That was great. Um, I know we have a meeting on the calendar for this Friday morning um, with a number of regional planning agencies. Um, Justin, I think you might be on it for yeah. mm -hmm. coordinating outreach between our statewide long range transportation plan and regional long range plans as well. So definitely encourage you to come to that and we'll plan on coordinating going forward as much as we can. Um, so we're both trying to, I think, get similar information. And everyone Any other is invited. Questions? Oh, yeah. Everyone is invited next week, November 2nd, 6 p.m. UTIC. Go to our website, sign up. Please come. Thanks, Justin. Any other questions on the long range plan? 
All right, seeing none, um, I think we can move to the next agenda item, which was the TIP amendment for fiscal year 23 to 27 TIP, uh, the Gallagher Terminal Access Project in Lowell. Um, is this uh, you, Justin? Yes. Your background? Uh, good. Um, <clears throat> so taking care of a little business here. Uh, as of October 1, we are now in federal fiscal year 2023. And that means the federal fiscal year 2023 to 2027 TIP is now in effect. And with that, uh, we have our first potential amendment for your consideration here today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on your screen is a, uh, a summary of draft amendment one. And this amendment involves uh, a project to improve commuter access, uh, access ways at the Gallagher Terminal in Lowell. Uh, the project includes repairs to the commuter rail platform, uh, rebuild of the existing stairway, uh, an upgrade to the elevators that run from the platform to the terminal, and reconstruction of the pedestrian walkway over the railroad tracks between the terminal and the, and the commuter rail platform. And so total construction costs, this thing, this, this project is about 65% design uh, as of this week. And the, the, the latest cost estimate that I have for it is around five and a half million dollars. And I'm sure that will change as, as design uh, progresses. Uh, so in order to acquire the, the funding needed to construct the project, um, the LRTA applied for a 5339B grant in the spring for $2.4 million. And at the time when we were developing the, the TIP uh, that's just gone into effect in the spring, we uh, included that $2.4 million uh, in, the transit, in the transit side of the TIP. So since then, the LRTA has learned they did not receive the award so we need to amend the TIP to reflect uh, the current uh, available funding for the project. Um, and for those of for those people that were here in the spring when we were developing the TIP, you you will remember that we did um, flex approximately three point nine million dollars from Federal Highway to FTA to help fund this particular project, and that along with the $600,000 in state funding that is available for the project uh, remain programmed in. So there's still approximately, uh, you know, there's a, there's a gap of, of, of a couple million dollars that uh, that uh, the LRTA is, is, is going to continue to address and we'll, we'll, we'll probably have to need to address this at a future MPO meeting. But um, so for today, we are amending, so the, the proposal is to amend the TIP um, to remove that $2.4 million that uh, was not awarded um, as part of that uh, grant application. So, um, and today I'd just like to ask the NPO to consider a vote to release the draft amendment as, as I presented it here for a 21 day public uh, review and comment period. And um, well, yeah, with that, I can take any questions that anyone may have. Thank you, Justin. Um, so to make the project whole is the thought to look at potential transit, other transit sources or carryover in the in the future. Yeah, and we'll um, if if and when another um, 5239B discretionary opportunity comes around, we'll definitely be um, giving it another go. Okay. Um, sounds good. Okay, but for now, this just removes it and frees up some of that yeah uh, at least for this, yeah. this fiscal year this um mass dot um has agreed to fund this portion um 100 percent state to 600 so <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay so even if it's not whole the work could still proceed kind of with that yeah. amount of money there could still be okay got it sounds good okay all right any um other questions for justin or Allie? All right, seeing none, um, I think you can call the roll, Justin. 
Or, I'm, I'm so sorry. We didn't even ask Let's for a motion, a motion. second <laughs> to approve. Yes, I got ahead of myself. Sorry about that. Um, so yes, I will first ask for a motion and second um, to release this TIP amendment, um, removing um, the 5339B funds for this project uh, from 2023 and the transit TIP. I'll make that motion, Tom Bommel, LRTA. Second, Pat Wojcic. Okay, so motion having made it seconded. Now, is there any other any other feedback or comments, questions? All right, seeing that now, color roll, Justin. Sorry about that. Mm, Gary Kerr. Yes. Brian Fowler. Yes. Pat Wojcic. Yes. Tom Bowman. Yes. Karen Fleo. Yes. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. So that passes um, and will be voted for endorsement at the next meeting. Um, the next item is the Northern Middlesex MPO Title VI plan reporting updates. Is this, um, is this uh, you as well, Justin? Chris Curry. Yeah, I'm going to handle Chris, this one. Okay. Sounds Chris good. Chris Curry. Great. Um, good afternoon. Um, so we're beginning to uh, do our Title VI update. The last full Title VI was done in 2014. Since then, we've had annual changes uh, as recommended by the state, Mass DOT. Um, go on to the next page. All right, sorry. So um, the Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act states the following. No person in the United States shall, on the grounds of race, color, or national origin, be excluded from participation in be denied the benefits of, or be subject to discrimination under any program actively act or activity uh, receiving federal fiscal assistance. Um, the Title VI plan provides information analysis of transportation policies and services to assess the Northern Middlesex MPO compliance with Title VI of the civil rights. Now in Massachusetts, um, the state is the direct recipient of uh, federal highway and federal DO, uh, transit funding. And the uh, MPOs, metropolitan planning organizations are sub recipients. So as a result, uh, the MPOs and uh, nor the Middlesex uh, prepare and submit their Title VI plans to the state. Um, the requirements are, are basically uh, things we will include the demographic profile of the Northern Middlesex region, demographic maps showing the impact of, and distribution of state and federal funds for public transportation projects, uh, description of procedures by which mo mobility of ne and needs of uh, minority populations are identified and considered within the planning process, analysis of MPO's transportation system investments and identifies and addresses any disparate impacts, excuse me. Um, we're gonna revise and update our language assistance plan, uh, notifications uh, of protection under Title VI, um, the Title VI complaint procedure and the, and the complaint log. A lot of this work has is, is been done by the state and they've put um, the model documents on the, uh, for the um, notifications and complaint procedures that we'll be able to uh, uh, adopt. Next page. All right. So we're working on a very short uh, time frame for this project. Uh, we'd like to get the draft update to the uh, board, the MPO, before a week before the the December meeting, um, which we'll, I think we're tentatively talking about December seventh, possibly. Um, we'll have the certifications and assurances signed, hopefully by the by the end of November. And we'll get the whole thing endorsed at the December MPO meeting and then submitted to Mass DOT by the 16th of December. Um, understandably, that again, that's a very short time frame. And we've been told by the state that uh, we can run into no January if need be. So, of course, we'd like to get it all wrapped up this calendar year. Any questions regarding the Title VI? Thanks, Chris. That sounds good. No questions from our end. Does it, anyone else have any questions, comments? 
All right, sounds good. Well, good to see this is moving forward and, um, you know, happy to meet any time. I know, you know, our, our staff in our office is, is happy to chat or uh, connect anyone with our Office of Diversity and Civil Rights if there are any questions that come up along the way, so. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, so I think the next item is, is just other business. Um, does anybody have any other business to bring before the MPO? I have one item. Um, just wanted to mention to everybody that we currently have out right now a kind of call for projects for um, Safe Routes to School infrastructure projects that I'll paste a link for in the chat. Um, so the deadline, I believe, is November 14th if communities are interested in applying for Safe Routes to School infrastructure funds. Um, there is guidance um, at the webpage I just posted, um, and we encourage uh, folks to uh, look through that and apply. We're looking for a diverse set of applications uh, this year, so um, definitely encourage everyone to check that out. Any other business? <clears throat> All right, seeing none, I think the last item on the agenda is adjournment. So let's talk about, ask, let's right. talk about meeting. Oh, dates. next meeting. Okay, yes, good so, point. Yeah, I think the next meeting date did get changed. So go ahead, Justin. So um, as we're usually scheduled the fourth Wednesday of each month, uh, next our next scheduled date is November 23rd which is the day before Thanksgiving. And the meeting after that is December 28th, which is right after Christmas. And finding quorum on those days and finding people to attend these meetings is difficult. So typically we, uh, we do an alternate uh, MPO meeting early December. Um, I don't know what, what people have in mind, but there's, um, there, there are three dates between Thanksgiving and Christmas, which would be good, either November 30th, December 7th, or December 14th. And typically we do it usually around the 14th. But we'll need to meet to endorse this uh, amendment as well. I have a question for LRTA. Is there a time constraint on needing to perform the amendment by? on your end? Um, yes, um, we are, the design part is underway and that funding is for that. Um, so we do, we do need to be able to access those state funds. Okay, so it, it appears that the transit tip action that we'll be performing at the state level, the first one will be the first week of December. So we'd be able to capture this if if the MPO did meet before then to endorse. Okay. Um, if not, it likely would be a month later. Which which day, Eric? Which day are you submitting? We uh, sometime December the first week. week of December. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so November thirtieth. November thirtieth, or at the late what December fifth, like around the week of the 5th, most likely. So if the MPO met the 30th, yeah. it would it would be good. If it met the 16th, it would still, I think it would just be under the wire for your public comment period. So I'll defer to MPO members. I just wanted to clarify urgency or not urgency with the action. I think we would be okay. Um, it is on the state side and the RTA cap is already, you know, awarded to us. So, um, you know, the, the piece that we need is technically, you know, is there. I think that the state would work, you know, be able to work with us around the amendment needed. So. Right. Would it be helpful, cool. Justin, maybe to send around a poll or something? Just I, ask yeah, folks I, can, to... I can send a, a request on those three dates and see what uh, people's preference are. Yeah, that. Okay, sounds good. And yeah, I, I, 
ideally be coordinated with the Merrimack Valley meeting date too, so we can do some outreach to them and see if they uh, have a preference because yeah, the normal meeting have, would fall. Yeah, do they have a date Eight. or do you know? Not they yet. don't have any action items for next month at the moment. That could change, but nothing at the moment. Okay. So we'll uh, sort of wait to hear on that then and see what time would work best. Yeah, I'm just thinking about our, our, our Title VI deadline and, that, and we won't be ready by November 30th. It'll, it'll probably need to move into January if that's the case. Okay. Which we've been which we've been told it's it's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So that sounds good for that. Um, anything else on meeting date or other business? Okay. Sounds good. Um, I think with that I can ask for a motion and second to adjourn then. Motion to adjourn, Tom Bommel. Second that will just all right. I think we can just do a voice vote for this if that's okay. So all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. I think with that objection, we're adjourned. So thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.